what I'm first trying to do is fire myself as a CEO mm -hmm. and hire myself as a CMO. Mm -hmm. I think that there's somebody better that can actually run the company. Yeah. Operations, hiring. I don't like doing any of that stuff. Yeah. I want to focus on what I do best and what comes easiest to me. And what also makes us the most money, which is marketing mm -hmm. in all different forms. Welcome back to another episode of True Wealth Conversations. I'm your host, Dominique Broadway, and I am super excited because we have a special guest today. Now, I'm going to be honest. <clears throat> I met this person a few weeks ago. I did not know who he was, right? But little did I know, he has one of the most amazing e-commerce brands and one of the most like popular and easily noticeable brands in the country, I would say. So I'm really excited for my guest today, Corey Arvinger. How are you? I'm good. I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you? I'm <laughs> very, very good. So I'm super excited to be here with you. Can you tell everyone a little bit more about you and what you do at Support Black Colleges? Yeah. So my name is Corey Arringer, like she said, and I serve as the CEO of a company called Support Black Colleges, where we focus on getting our black kids back to our black schools through merchandise. So I actually tell people a lot of times that we're a media company that sells clothes because we focus on the media first. We push a lot of media out, and then the clothing is just something that you can wear and you know support proudly throughout the day. So mm -hmm. that's what I do. You know, In the meantime, I'm a dog dad, <laughs> and um, I am a professional <laughs> LA fitness basketball player. Wow, LA fitness specifically? Yeah, specifically. Okay. I only have one membership there. That's good. That's really good because some people have like a lot of memberships. So. No, not me. I, Thirty-five dollars is good for me. That's good. Very affordable, and you're okay. Frugal. It sounds like. I'm not like everybody hates Chris Dad frugal, but I'm like <laughs> I like to watch my my money. Yes. Okay. So talking about money, right? I know at uh, Support Black Colleges, you guys have just done and broken like a lot of I don't know say records and just had really great days in in sales. And I will say after I met you, I was really impressed to see like how. The numbers and revenue wise that you guys are able to generate in the e-commerce space and me specifically one of my goals this year is to launch an e-commerce brand and okay. i've been wanting to do one for a while i specifically want to do drop shipping so i would love if you could provide us with some insight because there's a lot of people that are like me that want to get into the e-commerce space and mm. don't know the first step so mm -hmm. what would you tell someone who maybe is like me that is like hey i want to launch an e-commerce brand this year like what's the first thing i should do so I, I use this acronym called SIMPLE that I use to talk about how to go from zero to a fully running business. Mm -hmm. So S is Shopify. I always say start with Shopify. You can do it for free. If you don't have any money, it's free or like a dollar mm -hmm. for like the first 30 days. Yeah. And I wouldn't actually start that Shopify until I get the other things on the back end done so that when you're ready to launch, you're paying a dollar, mm -hmm. right? And so um, Shopify is the first thing. You have Wix, you have, um, I mean, a lot of different, but Shopify is just the most... And they're like the most easily it's, like it's integratable easy. with other things, right? They have a bunch of other things. And, and it's funny that you say that because the I in simple is integration. Mm. So that's the apps and everything that you're including in it. Yeah. So you would do something like that. Uh, if you're trying to do drop shipping, depending on what you're trying to drop ship, Printify is a really mm. good uh, place that you can, uh, or Printful, mm -hmm. both of those, where you can get a t-shirt made, a hoodie, a scarf, a mug, like literally anything, just anything. about a bag, a notebook, <laughs> anything. And you don't have to have upfront capital. Yeah. So the person buys it. And then what happens is the company says, somebody bought this. I'm going to put part of this money to, towards the product. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to put part of this money back into your account. Okay. And then they make it and fulfill it for you so you don't have to worry about it. So really, so that's drop shipping. Drop shipping. And you just serve as like the marketing head, essentially. Yeah. You find a way to generate sales through social, email, text, whatever that might be. And then you let them do all the hard you know, labor. Work. Yeah. So with your business specifically, do you do drop shipping or mm. how do you do I do it? not do drop shipping so we have our own warehouse mm -hmm. uh, we have a warehouse in Miami and one in Columbia okay. so it did start off as me doing it myself though mm -hmm. so I think a lot of people want to jump to that but don't understand that there was a process that got to that yeah to get so there. we found out what it took to make you know what does it take from idea ideation to getting in a customer's hand mm -hmm. so it starts with I want to do a hoodie okay well what kind of fabric do I want to use? What mm -hmm. colors do I want to use? Okay, yeah. I want a patch. Is the patch heat press? Is it sewn? Okay, mm -hmm. then is it folded? Is it bagged? Is it so so many options? It's all of those things <laughs> that people just think is like, oh, I want to start a brand and it's easy. Yeah. But it's so many little minute things that you have to 
really consider, especially mm-hmm. if you want to separate your brand from the average Everybody Joe's else brand. Is. Yeah. Okay. So obviously there's drop shipping as a method. And what's the other method that's not drop shipping? What do you call it? Just direct sales? Just like fulfilling, the okay. self-fulfillment, I would say. Okay. So you hear a lot about drop shipping, right? Can you give us like the pros and cons of drop shipping versus mm-hmm. self fulfillment because you're more in the self-fulfillment space definitely i mean i think that because people think that job shipping is just like the end all be all the best and it's cool so like let's just say you work a nine to five but Mm -hmm. you want to have a brand as well but you don't have time to fulfill orders Mm -hmm. well drop shipping is easy because like i said you just serve as the marketer okay so that's always good because you can just market brand get influencers in it and then Mm -hmm. everything else is handled so that's cool yeah but on the opposite side of that your margins are drastically decreased yeah because you're having to pay you have to pay for everything everything. and generally let's just say a shirt wholesale if you buy it might be two dollars but if they sell it to you it's going to be three dollars or four dollars if you look at that from a large scale where you're going to lose a lot of money yeah so I think the margins are one thing. Um, it depends on your time. Yeah. Do you have time to do so, right? And then on outside of that, it's just like, I like to touch the quality of my stuff. Yeah. So I want to feel it. I want to see how they package it. You know, sometimes when people are drop shipping stuff for you, they don't have the same affinity for your product as yeah. you do. So I'm like, oh, this, this, this string is a little off. Let me cut this real quick or let mm-hmm. me do this. They might not be doing that, but yeah. you don't know. So the customer experience is better when you do it yourself, but... It comes down to time, finances, and, you know, how you want to operate the business. Yeah. But let's say, like, in your scenario where you're self-fulfilling, there's still a lot of expenses that go into that as well because then you have more human costs, right? What are some of those human costs that people might not be thinking about when it comes to self-fulfilling? One of the things that um, I realized that really upset me is, like, when people are sewing or stitching, and let's just say the sewer, like, goes off track, then they put, like, a line through your patch. Mm -hmm. The hoodie's done. Really? You can't, you can't. Oh, that's like the stuff that ends up at like Marshalls and TJ Maxx. Exactly. Yeah. Or like the stuff we give away to our friends and family yeah. who always ask for something for free. Yeah. So like <laughs> that happens all the time. Oh, or okay. if the heat press maybe burns the patch. Mm. Like those kind of costs or like, you know, um, this is not a direct cost, but like somebody who is supposed to be heat pressing that day doesn't show up. Now mm. I have to step in the heat press because we have a deadline. Well, now I'm taking away from marketing, social media, yeah. meetings. And so... The cost long term actually hurts us because now I'm not doing something I should have been doing Mm -hmm. in order to help us, you know, move forward at a higher rate. But do you feel like the cost for like, I know you say like you have like a warehouse manager and then the people that work in the warehouse, um, do you feel like those costs are lower than if you were doing direct? Yeah, definitely. Because I did the math. Okay. At one point in time, I did the math and it was like, oh, this is actually cheaper. Mm. You know, they might, you know, they might get paid, I don't know, 30 cents per package they ship. It versus, you know, the wholesale company getting paid, you know, five dollars per package. Yeah, it's a big so difference. It, it really is different. And then the quality, we still get to touch it. We still get to participate in it. We still get to be a part of it. So yeah. it's still mine. And I can kind of negotiate those rates, too. Yeah. When you're dealing with a job shipping company, this is my rate. Mm-hmm. We service over a million clients. You were just another client. Yeah. That's really. I don't want to be in. The, I want people to feel like, hey, I, I get on the phone with you mm-hmm. and we can really talk about like what this should look like. And we can work together as partners versus just. I'm your your partner in, in drop shipping, essentially. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, I'm new to the space. I'm trying to start my little drop shipping company. Not your little company. <laughs> I mean, maybe, I don't know. Little not meaning the size. You know what I'm saying? Little as in I'm just work. I'm listening. But anyway, so I'm just starting my little company. And I say, hey, based on my current lifestyle, you know, I got two kids. I have run all these businesses. I don't necessarily want the stress or pressure of having to have the the, the facilities or um, what do you call them, the warehouse and stuff like that, right? So I'm deciding that, yes, I know the margins are lower, but I think drop shipping is for me because I want this to be more hands off. So my first step is to go to Shopify. Mm-hmm. Get the site. The site. Mm-hmm. And then also picking, you said between like maybe Printful or Printify. Yeah, Printify or Printful, yeah. Okay. And then um, what about, I know people have always mentioned like Alibaba, right? So do you, like do people drop ship from there? Not typically because there are generally people that are overseas. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, you can ship stuff from overseas every time, but that's yeah. a lot. You, okay. you, you, they're more like wholesalers. So mm-hmm. they can make anything for a lower price. And then mm-hmm. you can even ship that to a drop shipper. Okay. So wow. there's um there's a company called Shipmonk. We mm-hmm. used them for a little while. Okay. You send your product already made to them. It's kind of like an Amazon uh, fulfillment warehouse. Oh, okay. Where mm-hmm. you can ship them stuff and then whoever buys it, they handle that. Okay. That's another option. It's still drop shipping technically, but you are But you're still receiving the product at some point. No. You can get it shipped directly to them. You could. Oh, okay. Either way, because I wouldn't ship it to myself and then ship it to them. That's just 
unnecessary yeah, that's, cost. That's a lot but of I would ship it to them and maybe go meet them when they get it to look at it, you mm-hmm. know? So that's technically still drop shipping in a certain sense yeah. because they're taking your product and fulfilling it for you. But there's so many ways. But Alibaba, back to that point, mm-hmm. is more of like a wholesaler mm-hmm. account. Okay. Okay, so I go, I grab my Shopify site, maybe I decide to connect to Printful, um, get the little back-end integration set up to make sure Shopify and Printful talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And then what do I need to do then? Market. Market. It's time to sell. So okay. email marketing and text marketing, mm-hmm. um, influencer marketing, social media marketing, and grassroots, oops, excuse me, and grassroots marketing. That's what okay. I focus on. So I take those things. Mm-hmm. The combination of all of them is what make our brand grow. Yeah. So email marketing, text marketing, Social media marketing, influencer marketing, and grassroots marketing. Okay. So I know if you go to Corey's page at Corey Arvinger or support black colleges, you'll see that like all of your favorite celebrities are wearing his brand. <clears throat> so how does someone that does not have these connections, like how do you get these influencers and big names to like wear your stuff if you're just getting started? So there's a lot of ways, because people think it's so hard to get influencers and mm-hmm. celebrities to wear stuff, and it's not. Okay. I think the thing is, we think that we send one DM, and we'd be like, oh, Beyonce didn't respond. Well, <laughs> duh. Yeah. Beyonce's not responding to your DMs. She has 100 million followers. Mm-hmm. But there are steps you can take that are very easy. So I, I have a few things. One, I have a method called the pull-up method. Okay. Where I literally will pull up on not any the pull influencer. Out. The pull-up. No, no, not the pull-out. But... <laughs> That's, a, that's that's another that's another conversation <laughs> that we won't talk about here. Yes, go ahead. Um, but <laughs> the pull up method, there's six P's to it. But essentially, what you do is, if there's a celebrity having something in your city, mm-hmm. so give me an example, give me somebody, any celebrity, Don't, not Beyonce though. Okay, um, Issa Rae. Okay, so Issa Rae is in Miami. Okay, and she is having um, an event at the Soho House okay. in Miami. Mm-hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my hoodie, I'm putting it in a bag, and I'm finding a way first access entry point to get in the Soho House. So I either mm-hmm. know somebody. Well, I'm a member, so you can call me up. I'll okay, so you're you a member. So I'm like, <laughs> hey, Dom, Dom Issa Rae is here. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get in there. So, okay. so I'm in with you now. Mm-hmm. So now what I'm doing is, before I even do that, I'm doing research on Issa Rae, and I'm figuring out what we have in common. Okay. Oh, Issa's from here, or she likes this. Mm-hmm. Or I might have, I know she has a lot of Howard University people on her staff. Okay. So I know some of their names. Mm-hmm. So when I talk to her, I'm like, hey, Issa, man, like, I know you know so-and-so. I'll give four names, five names. I went to college with them. And she's like, oh, yeah, I love mm-hmm. them. And it's like, so now we're having a conversation. Yeah. The first thing I want to do is break, I want to break the ice. Mm-hmm. She's going to be there. The Soho house is a place where she doesn't expect people to be like super thirsty yeah, or like all on her face. So her guard is down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I'm breaking that last guard down by finding something in common with her. Mm-hmm. Then it comes to a point where I'm like, yeah, I know you love HBCUs. I've seen Insecure. I see how you like root for the black girl, like things like that. This company is something that fits your motto and what you do. Mm-hmm. And so then I give her the merchandise and then we take a picture. And then, you know, that's really it. I mean, and it sounds like it's easy because it is really that easy. It doesn't sound super easy, but there's a little bit of um, stalking involved, it sounds wow. like. So like the pull up method, revol- <laughs> it involves a little, like a little light, light stalking light. I don't like, think stalking is the word. Bit. I think like research is the word. So yeah. like for instance, I'm being sarcastic with the, no, with no, the stalking, definitely. but it's like, okay, I have to find where this person's going to be, mm-hmm. find, do some research to find the commonality mm-hmm. and then pull up on them and act like, not act, but like, you know, Hey, I see you like pink. I like pink. You prepared. Like here's a pink. So I'll say it like this, neck. when you go to a job interview, what do you do? Well, you, you say, research the company, you research the company, the, you might even research the interviewer. Yeah. And you might say, OK, or you ask somebody who's already been interviewed by that person. Oh, how was it? Yeah. What did they say? So that's good. It's not stalking. It's researching. So you're researching, you know? but also making sure that you're like aligned with where they're going to be, but also making sure that whatever brand you have aligns with their their goals, they like. their morals, yeah, their values as well. You have to do that research in that standpoint too. I'm not gonna ask anybody to represent my brand who I don't feel like aligns with my brand. Of course. So I'm not asking Miley Cyrus to wear a somewhere by college hoodie. Yeah. It doesn't align. Well, so it could. It could. Anything. Anything. <laughs> anything could. could. But I get what you're saying. So I have to start with that research first, which yeah. is, you know, it's just all a part of the process. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's like People are getting, people are trying to sell steaks to vegans. Yeah. And they're like, why are you not taking this? Why are you not posting it? I mean, I don't eat meat. Yeah. So are you surprised that I'm not interested in your product? Yeah. So that's why the research is so important. That makes sense. Okay. So we got all the back end technical stuff set up. So now we're just focusing on marketing, right? Mm-hmm. And so the funny thing is like, 
that's not easy, right? Marketing is, is definitely probably one of the harder things unless, yeah. you know, unless you really enjoy it and you do it very well, right? So mm -hmm. that's why it probably comes more natural to you. So the influencer marketing, the email marketing, the text marketing, um, what has been with, with your e-commerce brand, mm -hmm. with all of these marketing efforts that you do, what has been like some of your big sales goals that you've been able to hit with these strategies? So I always say that I don't make sales goals. I make impact goals. Okay. And because a sales number can be reached and then you just go for another one. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where there's never any real fulfillment because you just keep going up. Mm -hmm. and you're never really satisfied. So for me, I like impact goals. So instead of making a million dollars, I want to impact a million people. Mm -hmm. Because when you impact a million people, that money is way crazier. Mm -hmm. Like think about a real impact on a million people versus True. just making one million dollars. But let's talk about the money for a second. Because I mean, you know, people they're trying to make money. Of so I sure. want people to know, yeah. like, hey, if I start this e-commerce brand, what is the possibility? Right? Yeah. Am I bringing in a hundred dollars a day, a thousand a day, fifty thousand a day? 50000 a month. Like, what have you seen in your business? Because you have a successful e-commerce business, mm -hmm. right? What have been some of your bigger wins that, you, that yeah. you've had? Well, I'll first start by saying this. I remember when my goal was to make 5000 a month. Mm. I remember having that conversation like, bro, if we could just get this to 5000 a month, like, we're going to be lit. Yeah. I remember the conversation. Um, and so since then, we've been, doing, we've been able to do a lot of different things. But I would say our biggest win was doing a million dollars in a day mm -hmm. twice. That's awesome. So Black Friday, we run a buy one, get one or a $30 mm -hmm. hoodie sale. Partner with. So here's a little hack. If you want to have a big sales day, especially Black Friday, yeah. you discount your most popular items mm -hmm. and then you drop a new item at full price. Oh, that's so smart. I always do that because people are like, oh, I got the hoodie for 25 instead of 50. Mm -hmm. Well, this new product is $60, but I really got $25 off. Yeah. That's how people look at it. It's like they're tricking themselves in their mind. So there's also a sales psychology that goes into this oh, as well. Of course, yeah. of course. Okay. And so you partner those two, you have a discounted product and then you have really an overpriced product, but mm -hmm. it can be, it could be, that's fine because they're getting a discount. Mm -hmm. And then you add free shipping with orders over 250. Mm -hmm. Well, now they spent 220, but they're like, I want free shipping. That's really ten dollars off. Yeah. But you're going to spend the extra forty dollars to get you that ten dollars off. You will just to get. The, why do we do that? That's so true. And this is no. interesting because, like, even with as you guys are like think of, thinking about starting your e-commerce brand, and even me, as you're saying, it's it's not just put the thing out and they'll come. No, it's like the marketing is going to be very very important, but also the sales strategy as well. 100%. Also, little things. I know um, we just implemented one thing in my business like a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. adding one little like, hey, you can sign up and join this 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 class. But if you, you know, which starts next week, but if you want to get started right now, you can buy this one little bundle. That one bundle is literally completely eliminating all of our ad costs. Yep. Like that literally, upsell. right? And so, yeah. And so it's like, but that also comes back to that psychology, psychology of people want things now. They also mm -hmm. like to feel like they're getting a discount or a deal. And mm -hmm. so that's really important as well as people are starting to like think about their, 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 um, their e-commerce businesses or just business in general. Right. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's really important. I think the reason why we've been successful in the marketing space is mm -hmm. I think about how I like to shop. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, think, so I love this method. I, I talk about this all the time and it's the, um, the food court method. Okay. So when you're walking through a food court at the mall and they're like, sample, sample, I love sample. Those samples. You start taking a sample, you're like, dang, this chicken was kind of yeah. like that. Like, What's I'll, that one chicken that like they always have? General like, South or South? No, it's, yeah, but it's, it's like, I feel like it's like a honey chicken or something. It's always like a honey chicken. Something you honey ain't chicken. eating. Like I'm in a food court for like an Italian sub. Right. And then the girl pulls up, try this honey chicken. You're like, no, I'm here. I know I'm here for like a second cheese or whatever. Yep. And she's like, no, taste it. And you're like, oh my gosh, now I need honey chicken. Right? You got to get people just a little <laughs> bit. And so that's why like. Also, um, drug dealers did that too. Right? Mm -hmm. Give them a little something, something, get them hooked. That's. Your experiences are different than mine. So. I'm just saying. So that's also yeah. what drug dealers did back in the day. Give you a little bit. Back in the day or like recently for you? No, back in the day. Okay. okay. Back in the day when the big like cocaine epidemic in the D.C. area, I was a baby. Obviously. You're from D.C.? Yeah. Interesting. And they would give people a little something, something. They would get hooked and then boom, they got a, a, a lifetime, well, as long as they live, um, customer. Yeah. Okay. Sample. Similar food court method, but for drugs. Yeah, so we're talking about clothes here. I'm just saying. I don't want to take you back Basically, to a place. Basically, no, no, no. But saying um, like that psychology of the food court method great. is it it's doesn't just apply. It's, it, it's just a little taste. It's, it's a little, 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 it's a little taste. I mean, it's also uh, people it, like a sample, yeah, like a free course. trial. People like free things. Yeah, and that was you, that was actually interesting. One of the things I had implemented in my course business mm -hmm. last year, we tested out free trials. Oh wow! And we were getting um, seven day free trial to try out the course. Mm -hmm. 
join a community. We were getting like 80% of the people that signed up for the trials would activate and pay full price. Wow. And I was at first. Because it was too good to leave. It, yeah, it was like, I'm here. I don't want to get too out. Too good to leave. And it was really interesting because at first I fought it. I ain't going to lie. I fought mm -hmm. my team. I was like, we ain't giving on a free trial because there's so much value you can get in a 100%. week, right? Um, and I was worried. And there are, are some people who just take advantage of it and they of leave course. or, you know. But that was never emails. your customer in the first place. Exactly. But I realized that it. It allowed, especially like someone like me in the finance space, mm -hmm. um, giving them that taste, right? Because a lot of people have been burnt with really bad products and services, and they were able to get in and see like, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. I am enjoying this. I want to stick around. I see the value, right? And right. so I think that that food court method actually works in multiple types of industries. Literally every industry. Yeah. Literally, but the key is, and the key that we've both been saying is you have to have a good product after the sample. Mm, because yeah. some people get lost on the sample. Good point. It's like, That's that good. was not yeah. good. I'm definitely not coming here. So <laughs> sometimes people want to give their worst to yeah. the people for a sample. I want to give my best. Yeah. Because they're like, dang, if this is free, well... Good I Lord, can only what imagine is, what when I pay for this. Yeah. What? So that's why when I do when I speak and things of that nature, I'm always giving a hundred percent, no matter what it is, because they're like, I gotta buy something from him. I don't even something. know. He, I don't even know if he got anything to offer, <laughs> but I'm gonna buy some. I'm leaving here with something. Yeah, that's what they say. So you know, I, I say that in the clothing spaces. You know, I have a um, I have a free ebook that I do. Um, mm -hmm. It's called the What If Method. That I talk about like how do people if, get that? Just go on my website. Okay. Um, What's the website? It's, I don't I don't like promoting products first of all. What's the website? But it's Come my on, it's just my name. What's the website? CoreyArvinger.com. CoreyArvinger.com to get your free ebook. Well, let me tell you what the ebook is about. <laughs> the first. link will be below or it's somewhere. It's called the What If Method, and what it does is so we were able to get a partnership with Urban Outfitters mm -hmm. through this method. So what I do is I say, what if support black colleges work with Urban Outfitters? What, what, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. So I'll take their marketing, their branding, their style of t-shirt, and I'll combine it with our branding, and I'll put it out and say, hey, everybody take Urban so we can get this done. Mm. So we actually did that with Urban Outfitters, and it worked. Wow. And now we're in Urban Outfitters across the country. Wow. But I say that to say I give that book away for free, mm -hmm. and it's got some game in there. It's real game in there. Okay. But I use that as a lead to get emails. Of course. Because mm -hmm. everybody wants free stuff. Yeah. So I, that book probably took me like, I don't know, two days to make. Yeah. And, and it's full of stuff, but yeah. it's, it was But easy. it's like valuable information that is also proven. It's tactics. valuable. And then like when people say, oh, man, I, was, I did that and I got a partnership with this. Or I did wow. that and I at least got on a call with this person. That was easy. Wow. And so that's my sample to you mm -hmm. to get introduced to the rest of the things that I have to offer. Mm -hmm. And I never like, I don't, like you said, I don't even like to push it. I just, if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. But you get something for free, cool. Now you feel like, oh man, I done found this free thing. You feel yeah. like you really found something. And all the time, it's just a part of, the, of, of a funnel. Yeah. So even within We're personal, all in the top of somebody's funnel, the bottom everybody, of somebody's funnel. Everything yeah, in life is a funnel. Is I mean, a funnel. you look at the school system, you look everything. at everything. You look at anything that you do is a, the is jail a funnel. System, it's so it's all it's, it's funnel. all based off exactly. of how you use and manipulate the funnel for yourself. Yeah. And so even like just go through your everyday life and be like, man, what does this funnel look like? Okay, mm -hmm. so I wanted to come to this resort, so I had to see an ad. So then the ad took me here, then I got a discount code if I use it today, and then okay, like it's, that's and then how you get to the is. resort, and then they want to sell you Come on 15 now. excursions. Exactly. And then you got to buy 15 spa treatments. But if you don't do the upsell, it can be a downsell. <laughs> you don't have to do the 90 minute, but you can do the 30 minute, and I'll do it for so and so price. Well, we, can just, we can just do your shoulders for $10. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, I mean, and that's how you have to operate in your business. Yeah. When people say no to one thing, give them another option that might fit what they want to do better. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times people lose out on money because you don't give them that second option. That's true. You need to have a downsell or something that's equal to a value or that's more. And that's, that's important to know your customer as well yeah. a lot of people are not converting on sales because they don't know who their customer is very true so that's a whole nother topic whole nother whole nother whole nother, whole nother class yeah that's... hopefully we can go to coreyarbinger.com one day and attend that course so i know you don't like to market yourself but you've done some amazing things in the e-commerce space and also in the apparel space and work with tons of amazing celebrities Additional, what's some other brands you've worked with? Really so cool. we work with, uh, we actually just did a partnership with Mountain Dew. Okay. Um, we made some uh, merch for the HBCU e-gaming space. Mm -hmm. We're doing a $500,000 prize. And wow. we did all the merch for that. That's um, That's we dope. just got done with uh, NBA All-Star Weekend. Mm -hmm. So we've done some partnerships with the NBA doing their merchandise for not only the players, mm -hmm. for the store, and also for their Players Association. Okay. So we're currently working on that. Uh, Foot Locker, Jimmy mm -hmm. Jazz, Snipes. Um, Slutty Vegan, the Braves, mm -hmm. the, the Falcons, the That's Hawks. A lot. Okay. A lot of sports teams. <laughs> just a lot of different stuff. Okay. So, as I said, I know you don't like to promote you, you but you, you've done a lot. 
Um, so I'm sure you're highly sought after by brands, um, business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever. Everyone's like, hey, how can we get a piece of, of what you're doing and, and, and really be able to tap into your experience mm -hmm. um, that you've had because it's very invaluable. So what is next, not just for support black colleges, but what's next for Corey Arvinger in this next stage after you've already already accomplished so much at a young age? Um. So it's so funny because I feel like I'm only working in like 10% of what I could be doing. Mm -hmm. So what I'm first trying to do is fire myself as a CEO mm -hmm. and hire myself as a CMO. Mm -hmm. I think that there's somebody better that can actually run the company. Yeah. Operations, hiring. I don't like doing any of that stuff. Yeah. I want to focus on what I do best and what comes easiest to me. And what also makes us the most money, which is marketing mm -hmm. in all different forms. I would like to do that. I would love to get a partnership with Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. um, they're directly on the college campuses so oh, that yeah. I don't have to like, I want to just be able to go through them, give them all our stuff, and they sell for us. Oh, that makes Homecoming sense. Homecoming time. I don't want to sit you up You hear that, booth. Barnes & Noble? Yeah, He's come ready. on, Barnes. I'm about to do a, <laughs> I'm about to do a what if method for them, too. Yeah. Um, but Barnes & Nobles, uh, and that's that's more on the brand side. Mm -hmm. I really want to focus on get, giving back and like, more partnerships. Mm -hmm. So finding businesses and companies and things that align with what we are doing and going from there. Um, I, Aren't Amazon... The Amazon bookstores, aren't they on some college campuses now, too? They are I on think? some. Okay. Um, HBCUs, I don't know as many. Okay. But, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure yeah. they are. I mean, yeah. the Amazon lockers and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I would like to sign my first athlete. Mm. Um, our first, like, major influencer. So, Chris Paul has been a huge champion for the brand. I would mm -hmm. love to sign him to a deal. Yeah, yeah. To where, like, we do, you know, four releases, a collab. Mm -hmm. But he signed with Jordan Brand, so. Okay. I don't have as much money as Jordan Brand. Okay, so, you, um, you know, <laughs> I just have to, you know, maybe I can get like the player on the bench that doesn't play. Yeah. But yeah. I would like to sign okay. an athlete, a college athlete and a professional athlete. And okay. I would like to sign like an artist or something to champion the brand. Mm -hmm. So that's the business side. Personally, I don't know. I'm just kind of going with the flow of life right now. Okay. Um, I'm one of those people that feel like I'm in the right place at the right time at all mm -hmm. times. Yeah. And I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do every day. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everything finds its way towards me that's supposed to. That's good. Not too much pressure. I think sometimes people put too much pressure on their personal lives, like trying to yeah. set these goals and do these things. And sometimes you don't accomplish them and then it makes you feel like a failure or less than and yeah. things like that. And, and there's I nothing wrong with that either. Like, there's please, nothing wrong with, but set it's, your goals. Don't, don't listen to me. No, and I, but I also think that there's a lot of value in just going with the flow, right? I know yeah. like me personally, that's why I'm right now. I was like, well... I've done a lot of things right now. I'm just like, whatever happens, happens, right? Like, yeah. go with the flow, not putting too much pressure um, because I, I personally feel like a lot of times I, mm -hmm. I do put a lot of pressure on myself. Like, I'm an overachiever. Right. And if I don't accomplish certain things or if things don't go the way that I anticipated for them to go, you know, it allows me to, like, maybe sometimes get down on myself and feel, mm -hmm. like, less than, you know, things like that. And those are all self-inflicted, like, thoughts, right? Yeah, we, not, we, we make those goals and then we don't – do we don't get them sometimes, yeah. and then we're mad at ourselves, mad at ourselves. and we think people are judging us, but only you know about that. Yeah. And so for me, I think <laughs> I think one of my goals I would say too is though time freedom. Yeah. Like the money's cool, like I'm cool with that, but like I want my time back. Yeah. I want my time to do whatever it is. You I, got, I, I you got a lot of time. I do got a lot of time, but I still got to worry about <laughs> stuff that I don't want to worry about. That's true. That's so true. it's like I be having things over my head that I got to knock out that like yeah. no one else can do, and so to have that time freedom um, would be something that's really amazing. So it sounds like support black colleges is hiring a CEO. I mean, eventually, <laughs> I gotta I gotta get some paperwork straight first. So once you get that paperwork straight, everyone submit your resumes to support black colleges. Listen, your, your resume better be crazy. At whatever the email address is, because he's gonna be hiring a CEO because he's not a good CEO. I ain't gonna lie, I'm not a good CEO either. So this is actually one of my goals this year. I didn't year. say I wasn't a good CEO. I'm I just not, said I I'm don't not like that it. great of a CEO, and it's interesting. I've, I've I was talking about this. I don't think I was at the Rachel at Rachel Rogers event, yeah. and I was saying like. I didn't really start this to be, I didn't really start my business to be a CEO. I'm a finance nerd and mm -hmm. I just want to like talk about finance and teach it and preach it and market it. Mm -hmm. But all that other stuff, like you mentioned, it's not what I'm good at, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like even my chief of staff would probably be a better CEO yeah. than me. Um, and so I think that's also really important over time is to learn like what you're mm -hmm. good at, right? So even my, my other businesses now, I'm literally putting other other CEOs in place because I don't want to do it. And I also can already see like having those other people in the roles that are really, really good at that. Mm -hmm. The businesses perform better. Yep. Because, because that's what they do. Exactly. Putting somebody in something they do and enjoy is so much better than you doing something Literally. that you don't actually want to but, do But the thing enjoy. is, as entrepreneurs, 
we feel like because we start something that we are supposed to be the CEO. And that 100%. is not the case. And it's 100%. interesting because you, you see like um, when Jeff Bezos stepped down as CEO of Amazon mm. or I think Steve Jobs has, or got kicked out or stepped down from mm. as CEO of Apple, you know, before he had passed and then came back. But not everyone needs to be the CEO. And I think that that's something that's really important. So thank you so much for sharing that that is like one of your goals. That's that's a, that's goal. a goal of mine as well. I don't like being a CEO. It's too much, Listen, too much you know, I tell people all the time, <laughs> to me, CEO stands for capping every day online. Literally. People just be online just acting like this. Oh, I'm a CEO. Not me, because like, I'm a real CEO. You have no idea what that means. I don't have time to be online because I'm a real CEO. <laughs> that's what that means to me. So I don't want to be that. I feel you. I feel you. I feel like the real CEOs, they, they don't be online. It's some, some fake do. ones. It's some, some fake do. ones. They be online all day long, bro. When you gonna go CEO? Always on the internet. Get them on the podcast. <sighs> we gotta find them. Put them on the podcast. They so busy online though. Busy. All right. So um, this has been really good. Is there? Okay. So last question before we wrap. Uh, so the name of this convers this podcast is True Wealth Conversation. So I want to know when you hear of true wealth, mm -hmm. what does that mean for you? To me, um, true wealth is it means a few things, and for me personally. I think it has to do with family. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see my family happy and able to do whatever it is they want to do in life. Yeah. So, you know, for wealth for somebody might be making $20 million and mm -hmm. having a big house and a big car with a nice dog. Mm -hmm. and you somebody have all else, of those things. Somebody else <laughs> might be, you know, just to not have to worry about rent for the next yeah. few months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So wealth is, for me, whatever makes your life comfortable and easy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to think about paying bills. Yes. I don't want to have to think about, like, I'm in a... I, I had an argument with some of my guys earlier because we we're planning this bachelor trip for my friend. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, the deposit is like three fifty, dollars and, mm -hmm. and people were like, well, can we move it to like four weeks from now? And five? I'm like, it's three fifty. dollars <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I said, wait. what are you guys doing to where you don't have three fifty dollars disposable? Yeah. And I said, that, that to me, I was like getting upset yeah. because it's like, I'm not upset about the trip. I'm upset that you have yourself in a situation that you can't afford to where you can't even put three fifty dollars down and without feeling like, dang, I'm not going to be able to eat this week. Yeah. And so that's what I, I really care about, teaching other people wealth and, mm -hmm. and how to be wealthy and how to use e-commerce e and digital products or uh, options or whatever it is that you're doing in are, order to yeah. make. It's so much money out here and you worried about 350 Like, why yeah. are you not getting more money? That job that you work and that you go every day to, something's not fulfilling you yeah, there. So but it's, it's time to turn it up. That also comes back to like money management. Like a lot of people are just yep. really bad with managing their money. Um, I had a similar situation. I was planning a bachelorette party for one of my friends mm -hmm. and you know, I, I do pretty well for myself. And so I had to like, I'm like, okay, guys, we're putting this together. I picked stuff that I felt like was really economical. And I even decided that I was going to front some of it just so more people could come. Right. Just because I'm like, you I got it. Me. I ain't doing it. Man. Get somebody else it was, to do it. It was like, all right, y'all all in like 750 or five for everything. Like the house, the chef, you know, like, and people couldn't afford it. And well, I you said economical, then said chef. No, I but like seven fifty to go somewhere to another country that includes your hotel that's and impressive. your food. That is impressive. Come on now, yeah, that's, that's good, impressive. right? Yeah. Your hotel and your food for like five nights. That's actually really good. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. And so like private villa, mm -hmm. oceanfront, and people were like, I mean, you would have thought I had asked them to give like their firstborn child, and I couldn't believe it. And they literally wanted to like change the, the location and I'm like well she expressed that this is what she wanted to do now you're saying that because Man. you can't manage your money all year now my friend gotta go have her bachelorette party in I don't know it was like what was like somewhere like Tennessee or something I'm like yeah come on now like what are we doing I literally, literally, so literally was, in that same position <laughs> literally we went it's from Columbia yeah. to Miami to now Atlanta Oh, you're in Atlanta. Oh, wow. So okay. I'm like, I'm gonna stay at home. So you're just driving up the street. That's convenient. I mean, I'm I'm cool. Okay, but but, but it's frustrating too. But it also it's interesting because you know a lot of times many of us are in like these social circles where mm -hmm. you know many of us are doing okay, you know, mm -hmm. doing very well or doing okay above average financially. And then so you have your other friends that may not be doing as well, but mm -hmm. you don't typically do a lot of things with them. So it's like that one time every couple of years you be like. Dang, people really can't afford two fifty. It's ghetto over here. It was like, yo, I had set it up. I was like, yo, just send a deposit of a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I had two people send a deposit of a hundred dollars, and I was like, y'all got six weeks to give me a hundred. Like, I'm talking. I, I was like, what are we doing? You know, it's crazy. What are we doing? And that's why I say this, like, um, and not to go too long, but yeah. this, this is why I say this. You have different friends for different things. That part. You got your turn out friends. You got them. your business friends. Yes. You got your this friends. So my friends that I'm going to the bachelor, those, those are my childhood friends. Yes. Those are friends yeah. I've known for a long time. So 
That's them. Yeah. I have my business friends, my entrepreneur, my CEO. If I say tomorrow we're going to Cancun, yeah. folks got the money. We and here. we book and fly. We outside. You know, so like I had to understand that, okay, this is this is a group of friends. Yeah. Let me actually take a step back and not lead this. Let somebody mm-hmm. else lead it who may be more aligned with yeah. you all. And I'll just participate and, and give where I need. Yeah. And so um, And that that's important too, just to because we all have different groups. Like you have yeah. you have the groups you're like, hey y'all, you trying to pull up to Puerto Rico tomorrow. You have the other group. It's like, hey, do you just want to go to the Waffle House for breakfast? Like, and that's all that the they waffle can do. House. I like the Waffle House. Is that house. what you think we do in Atlanta? No, I oh. I go to Waffle House in Miami. You sit inside? Do I sit inside? For yeah. breakfast? How, where are you supposed to sit? They don't have no outside. Waffle House is like a 2 a.m. thing. That's not like a. Oh, well, you know, I'm a little bit older, so I like to go in the morning at like 8 a.m., really early, before like the crowd. <laughs> That's not, what I like to do. I'm okay? learning a lot about you. But I have my other friends that like to join me at 8 a.m. to go to Waffle House before the crowd gets in. The food is freshest that time. Give of day. me all their names so I can block them from social media. Oh my media. gosh. There's different groups for different things. Okay. Ignore that story. We all say that. Anyway. So, <laughs> with that being said, there's different groups for different things, and you don't have to dumb down your life based on one group. You got your that's friends true. that can hop in the PJ. You got your friends that's not. They that want to have their bachelor Uber X. party. Oh, split an Uber X? Is that a th- that's a thing? Oh, yeah. you can split the okay, yeah. You said PJ, so I was like, the other thing is like splitting the Uber X between. Yeah, I only people. do Uber Black, but I get it, I get it, I get it. Right, so there's different levels, right? <laughs> it's different levels. All right, so this has been absolutely amazing. How can people find support Black colleges? I'm sure just go to the Instagram, but any other ways to to find support Black colleges or to follow you in your personal journey? Yeah, I mean, you can find support Black colleges at supportblackcollege.org or support Black college on Instagram. And then myself, which is my name, Corey Avenger. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Corey, for coming on and showing us a whole nother way that we can build our wealth and also for giving what true wealth really means for you. 